Hi everyone, my name is Brandon Harrison. I'm Associate Features Programmer here at DocNYC. I'm very pleased to welcome the filmmaking team from Medicine Man, the Stan Brock story, director Paul Angel, producer Doug Blush, and Vladimir Daniel. So guys, the film is amazing. It, it is a wide breadth of locations, but also a, a wide breadth of emotion for me as a viewer. And you guys kind of joked a bit about the international scope of, of your team, but the story is, is such a huge story about a, an interesting man. So I'm curious, what was the first introduction to Remote Area Medical and Stan, and how did this whole thing begin? Well, it all started when um, the producer, Victor Bueller, um, sent me a newspaper article um, in 2011, which was all about Stan. And, and the article did, a bit like our film, it did outline, okay, this is Stan's interesting backstory, and this is what Stan's up to in contemporary US society. And I, I mean, perhaps because he's British and I'm reading about this guy um, back in London, but you know, he's in America. I was just really interested in this. And I, I had been looking for a person to base a documentary around for a while. And I read the article and was just blown away. So I hesitated for a moment and I thought, well, I'm just going to call him up. I'm just going to Google him, find the organization. It was like a Sunday afternoon, but I thought I'm just going to call the office anyway, maybe just like leave an answer machine message. And uh, so I call, it's in the evening and on a Sunday and Stan picks up the phone himself straight away. And it's like, hello, could I help you? And I'm thinking, wow. So this guy's the real deal. Like he's in there on a Sunday working away, like a total incredibly committed workaholic sort of guy. And I thought, wow, this is interesting. So, I mean, and this is only about 30 minutes after reading the article, I'm talking to the guy on the phone. Oh, this is amazing. So I said that I was inspired by him. I'd like to do a story all about you. And he said, well, to be honest, um, I've got a bit of a media exposure. So I do get approached by filmmakers from time to time and I'm going to have to assess this. And so I don't know why, but he chose us. I think there was a couple of other filmmakers in the mix at the time. He said, yeah, I'd love you to go ahead and do a film that's kind of largely based on my life, but also covers what, what I do with, with Remote Area Medical. Um, why he chose us is, it is hard to say. I mean, we weren't the most experienced guys. Maybe there was some sort of connection between me and Stan. Because, um, I mean, I've lived in a couple of, countries um, similar to Stan in my time and I don't know I kind of related to that adventure spirit that he had and I, I was kind of looking for an adventure myself so um, yeah he, he chose us and and we, we pushed on and that was 2012. I mean that backstory kind of speaks to how wide-ranging some of the projects that he was going out on even at mm. that time. And I'm curious, as a filmmaking team, you know about his work, how do you guys decide we're gonna go on this mission? We're gonna go on this mission. We wanna show this. We wanna look at these different subjects here. Now, I mean, I, there's so many options and there is a certain sort of story that you're trying to meld that goes along with this man's personal story. So how did you craft those, those mission tales? I think we took a decision quite early on to focus on what remote area, uh, remote area medical do in the United States. Like talking of like the international reach, we, do, we don't even touch upon the fact in the film, remote area medical do missions in uh, the Philippines, Haiti, um, India, they've been all over the place. So we felt that that would be a, a large distraction. We felt there was just a lot going on in this film already. So we had to pare that down in production. So we really didn't focus on any international operations. I mean, I don't even think it's, okay, in the beginning, it's mentioned in the movie, but it's not really made clear that they continue to do those. I think there was one like last month in a, in a foreign destination. So that was an early choice in production. And then when we came to um, editing, um, I mean, that's where the skills of, of somebody like Doug and Tim Beast and, and Katie yeah. came in. 
because we had so many different avenues to go because the guy's got this really interesting life. I mean, there's actually bits of his life that we've missed out. Like he was a naturalist author at one point. Like, that's not mentioned at all. Um, he, he started several zoos in the United States. So um, it was really with the help of the editorial team that we were able to craft a story that focused on the sort of strongest dramatic elements and let the other things kind of fall fall away. I mean, unless it was a trilogy, we weren't ever going to be able to pack in the, the true richness and depth of, of the Stanbrock story. I mean, what do you guys think, um, Doug and Vladimir? I can, I can, uh, well, real quickly, I'll just say that I, I, I've worked on films about the healthcare issues in this country and actually globally. And I, I always look for something different in those kinds of stories. And this came to me and I was astonished to find one of these stories that, that really takes on the healthcare issue in a really viable way, in a, in a, in a positive forward looking way, but that's mated with a, you can't write fiction this good life bio story. And, and to have both of those things in one film is, is super rare. It's, it's, it's a total tantalizing uh, opportunity for anybody working on story. And, and what was so great with working with the team was we were able to interlace those elements to make it all resonate and make it seem like one continuous sort of symphony of, of this man's life. And it was just a joy to watch his film and to, and to participate in it. So, and Vladimir, I know you, when, when we first contacted, I, I was astonished at what you guys had. It was so good already. And Tim, our, 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 you know, the editor that really was working day to day, uh, kudos to him. He did such great work with the structure uh, based on notes that we had and, and so many good ideas of his own. So yeah, it was, it was just total joy. Oh, are you going to add something, Vladimir, or before well, I go? I mean, not, much, not much to add to that, to be honest. Um, I think it was pretty much encapsulated everything. I, I wanted to, to talk about Stan's, Stan's life. I mean, Paul, you talked about relating to him in, in some manner, your own life. But when you're digging into this backstory, his journey, you know that there's a lot of archival on him. There's a lot of media appearances, as he, as he has said to you initially. What was that experience like crafting this, this life narrative alongside of this story about his, his work in this healthcare struggle? Well, they, they're very different skills, I think, um, being out on location and shooting um, people and people in, in a lot of distress that, you know, you had to be uh, discreet about. And meanwhile, like trying to get close to a guy who's 50 years older than you, who, you know, loves aviation and horses, but doesn't necessarily love to talk about many other things. Um, those skills, those kind of interpersonal skills are very different from the sort of bloodhound pit bull. Is that a bad analogy of two different dogs? The bloodhound pit bull um, spirit that's needed to find good archive and then, you know, then get the best HD of what you've already found and just keep pushing to improve it and make it better. And then, you know, you find a steel and it's like, oh, let's get a better steel of when he's a baby. And that is real grind. That's really hard. That's really tough stuff. And we had somebody who worked pretty much, well, I wouldn't say full time for eight years on it, but they, they were available to us constantly for eight years, the um, researcher, uh, associate producer, Alex Zidane. And at, at a moment's request, he would just immediately go searching for what we'd asked for. So you need, he calls it tunneling, you know, like the archive stuff, you've got to be extremely persistent. And you, you've got to take like a hundred slaps in the face before you find the thing you're looking for on the hundred and first YouTube video or whatever it is you're, you're looking through. So yeah, it's very different skills. I certainly couldn't have done it all myself, that's for sure. <laughs> I mean, I was curious, you know, as a filmmaking team, were there any surprises with that process as someone that's such a prominent figure? You're like, oh, wow, we found this thing. This was amazing. I'm glad that we can include this part in, in the film. Yeah, actually that, did happen to us um, because at the end of, um, I guess, what we call the penultimate edit when we're working with Katie and really that one was all about structuring the Stan story kind of end to end and making it really coherent. Whereas with Doug and Tim, when they got involved, it was a lot more about actually interweaving it with, um, you know, the modern day progress of RAM and sort of the US healthcare politics element of that. But, you know, we're sort of well on the way in that edit and we had this big gap really from 
the sort of early 80s where Stan was sort of finishing his film career. And then when we started filming in, uh, you know, 2012, and, you know, we were just speaking to somebody out in Tennessee that we were trying to get some archive from. It was actually the Tennessee Archive of Moving Image and Sound. And the researcher there, Eric Dawson, said, by the way, have you guys um, come across this stuff they've got at East Tennessee PBS? He says, what stuff? This says, oh, apparently they've got this drive just full of early Ram VHS footage from the late 80s, wow. early 90s through to, you know, kind of early 2000s. Would you like to see it? And we thought... Hell yeah, we'd like to see it. And, you know, at that point, we thought maybe we've got two weeks left of that edit and suddenly this thing dropped and we had to extend the whole thing. But, you know, as you'll see in the film, there's some really critical footage that came out of that. And I think when you're doing documentaries, that's something that you've always got to be aware of. And, and in a way, it's a blessing when that happens. The, the film, I mean, focuses on a, a, a big, larger-than-life figure who you kind of said is a little bit reticent to himself. How much of building up the story was pulling out the stories about Stan from his staff, the people around him. What was it like interviewing them, the women in the building, this, his extend, extended world? What was that process like? People, people in the office called Stan the Legend, it, they have an incredible respect for him. Um, so... I mean, the real challenge was actually to get beyond the, po the parts of the Stanbrock story that were already out there in the kind of public sphere and kind of get into like, well, what was the original motivation? What would make you, what is it in your makeup as a person, if you like, uh, innate, that would make you leave United Kingdom to go to somewhere like Guyana? that would make you leave Guyana to take on a career in the US, which was a complete unknown. That's what I wanted to get to really. And I think what comes across in the film is that really he was a man looking for a home and he didn't find it initially. And there was the disappointment of that, but then eventually he, he does find it and he does find people to become a kind of proxy family that, that really does fulfill the, that, that kind of need that perhaps we all have to, to ultimately belong to a place or a community. So, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I love that aspect of the story because I think that audiences love second acts. And, and like you say, some, a man who finds a way to remake himself in, in a way that, that finally gives him emotional redemption. Because mm -hmm. um, Stan, Stan had his, his hesitancies and his regrets and things like that. And then to, to see him fight so hard for something he could truly believe in and then find real love, I think you're exactly right. It's a, it's a family story in the end. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and even with a reticent subject, you see that emotionality. I, and, and to address your question, Brandon, the staff, yeah, the, 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 this particularly, the, the primary secretary who, who became, you know, so important at RAM, she, she, her, her testimonial about, you know, uh, about what Stan was about uh, mm. really shines through the movie. And you can see the love there, you know, it doesn't have to be effusive and gushy, but it's so, it's so apparent the way his staff looks at him and how he kind of roams the halls as, as this humble legend, you know. Mm. Mm. What was really nice was, I kind of began to consider myself as like the world expert on Stan. And then you'd interview somebody and you'd realize, oh no, they've been working in the office with a guy for 25 years. They know incredible things about Stan that I, had, I could never reveal. And they would just pull stuff out that was just so golden and so insightful that hadn't even occurred to me. So there was a, a voice of constant discovery of, by speaking to those people. They'd spent so much time with him. There was just so much there to, to get from them. It, I mean, it's a long process. You're making a film. Were you able, was Stan actually able to see any of the project before his death or? I'm actually not sure if we ever sent him a rough cut because Stan was, he was very trusting. He wasn't um, at our, um, he wasn't, he wasn't at us all the time to go faster and show me what you've done. And there was a level of sort of quite deep trust, actually, which to this day, I really um, respect that, that he did that. He, he, 
he knew we would deliver eventually. He could tell that we were just really persistent people that were actually going to get this done because we didn't intend to take eight years. I mean, I thought it was going to be like two. And by the time we got to sort of four, I was thinking, wow, is this guy just going to shut this down? But yeah, he kept the faith. You know, I'll never forget that. He, he kept the faith with us the whole way. We would not have made it. I mean, this is my last question. And I, you touched on it a little bit about the themes of finding a home and adoption. Some of those are the things that stood out to me. Ultimately, what would you want people who see this film to take away from it? Right, that, that's so easy. And I've been like desperate to say it. That, so what we, okay, I'm just going to break it down. Like, what we do in the film is really show Stan coming home to his family. And, and that, has only been made possible by spirit and the hospitality of the American people. And just at the end of the film, when it could turn in towards Stan and his thoughts, what we're trying to do is actually look out towards uh, the volunteers, remote area medical, the American people that are going to keep this thing going in future when he, he's not around. And they're the same people that have actually enabled him to do this in the first place. So it's not a film about the awesomeness of Stan, ultimately. It's actually a film about the awesomeness of what the American people can still achieve. And, and I think that's really important because when I was traveling around America, I actually experienced a lot of negativity from Americans about the way they were feeling about society. And I spent quite a lot of time telling them, you, you know, this is a great country this is the most hospitable country in the West that I've been to certainly. And you, know, you should never, you should never forget that. Um, so we, we wanted it to ultimately be a celebration of American spirit and what Americans can achieve when they get together. Paul, oh, thank you so much for those words. Very well said. Paul, Doug, Vladimir, an amazing film, Medicine Man, Stan Brock story. Thanks for joining us here at Doc NYC. Thank you very much. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Doc, Doc NYC. Great festival. Amazing. Thanks, guys.